I got it. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. <laughs> It doesn't fit. So you might remember a couple weeks ago when we got the hammock chairs, we first tried to set up this little hanging chair under this trellis. And since we already got this red, this holder, this holder I got also on Facebook uh, secondhand, but it didn't come with a chair. And so when we hung those up, I said, well, we already have this hanger. So I'll keep looking for my dream hanging rattan egg chair. I said I didn't care how long it would take that I would check Facebook Craigslist every day for months until I found one. And guess what? It only took a couple weeks of checking every single day until I found this bad boy on Marketplace. So today's Thursday. I don't know if you've noticed, but Madison and I mostly vlog on the weekends because obviously during the week we are working and that's no fun to be vlogging. So we vlog on the weekends. Today's Thursday. So I just wanted to show you that this is happening and something else very exciting actually happened in the backyard today as well, which I'll show you. The other exciting update aside from the chair, which we are very excited about here, is also this is a really big deal. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me make a story uh, before the freeze where I basically used my iPad and I mapped out what I wanted the backyard to look like, what I planned to plant so that I could visualize in my head what companion plants would go next to what and whatnot. And uh, when I did that, I labeled this little area right in front of me. If you've been watching the vlogs, you know what it looked like. I labeled this little area a dead zone because before the freeze, there was all kinds of stuff in here from the previous owners. There were so many rocks we could not plant directly into it. And then there were rose bushes, which I, you guys probably know by now, I'm not the biggest fan of roses, could definitely live without them. But there was something called like a phoenix or Arizona bird of paradise, which really attracted hummingbirds and bees. And then there was a sage. There were a few different things that they had scattered throughout here, none of which we planted, um, but I really liked that that one, those couple of uh, plants attracted different pollinators like butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds. Well, then the freeze happened and they all died. The roses still lived, but as I said, I can do without roses. But uh, the sage, it was nice and big. It was a hot lip sage. Uh, it died. There was also a, like I said, that bird of paradise. It died. Um, and so I just decided, or Madison and I decided, that uh, we would turn this dead zone into a live zone. So basically, we hired our neighbor's brother to come back here and pull up all the dead plants and the dead roots and all these rocks that were within the soil. He dug them all out and lined them basically around there. And there's still some throughout the dirt. So we still might need to put garden beds there. But this opens up a whole new world of possibilities. So we'll see what we get into this weekend and what we decide to transform it into. What up, what up, what up, Maddlebees? How's it going, guys? Yesterday, we got a lot of dirt. Okay, guys, I just ran outside because I ordered soil to be delivered. He is just about to dump the soil into the front yard. I'm so scared this is gonna be so much soil. I'm so nervous. Oh, there it comes, it's coming, it's coming! There it is! It doesn't look like too much. I think it's good. And we also rented a wheelbarrow. So now that we have that stuff, we're gonna get our project started this morning. You have any comments, questions, or concerns? I just woke up. I need not say able. We used an imperfect box to put over that bed, if you guys remember, because they don't use that much tape in their boxes. Every other box is like so much tape, you have to take the time to rip off. But these just have a couple, so they're the easiest ones to use. And then I'm gonna throw some of that in there too. It's like some packaging and egg carton. Trying to fill the bottom a little bit because you actually only need like eight-ish inches of good soil. Most, um, like, is it called annuals? Basically plants that you, they fruit and then they die and then you rip them up. Their roots don't go very deep. So you don't need a lot of soil. So you fill up the bottom a couple inches a little bit. Got it? Oh! Okay. 
pick it up. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> no, 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 stop, 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 stop. Stop. Ow. What? If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me attempting to draw up plans for the whole garden and you would have seen that grow bags were a significant part of what I thought we were going to do because I don't want to build more wooden beds. It's a little bit risky for termites since we've had issues with that. And then I thought about getting these metal beds from Epic Gardening because he swears by them. But the more I think about it, the more I think like if we just use all the grow bags that I have, then we can move them around if they don't like the conditions. I can control the soil inside of those bags for particular plants, like we got a blueberry plant. And if I put it in a grow bag, then I can make the soil more acidic like they like. So I think that this might be a little grow bag garden area. We're just trying to solidify what we think so that we can start putting the soil in them because we only have this wheelbarrow until six o'clock tonight. So we really need to get busy moving all the soil while we have it. We took a break for lunch, got free birds, but um, I don't think actually after looking at the yard for a little while with the bags in it that I wanna just do bags. I feel like it's a little too, Madison's being obnoxious. I don't know what's going on here. I don't think I wanna leave them like that. I just don't, don't really like the look of it. So we'll figure out another bed situation. We will use some of the grow bags around the yard. I just don't wanna fill the whole area up over there with them. So time to keep moving the dirt so we can move it all before we have to return the wheelbarrow. Babe, what's the problem? Oh, I'm tired. Someone is upset and yelling at us from all the way over there. I opened basically every window in the house, y'all. So he followed us from the windows in the front yard to the side to here, and now he's over there. All right, what were you wanting to tell them? We're all done. We could take y'all up front because we have to take this anyway, I guess, but. There was a huge little dirt mound. Our neighbors were giving us a huge mound. little dirt mound. Oh God! There was a it was big, but it was little. You know, <laughs> they know. Our neighbors were giving us crap about it, like joking around, right? They're like, "Man, you're gonna take the Civic off of that little mini ramp." <laughs> They're like, "I'm king of the hill." They were saying stuff like that, so that was pretty funny. But it's done. We got it all in the grow bags. All the grow bags are full. That's good success. Then we filled that bed that needed to be filled. Oh yeah. And what else? Had a little leftover dirt, so we packed some spoil in front of the in front of the front of the house. Yeah. Um, we're also, like I said, thinking we might duplicate that over here, but that will have to be done at a different time. The plan now for those beds would be more long-term food, mm -hmm. like fruits and stuff. So we're not in a super hurry about that. This is day two and today we're gonna be trying to set up some like soaker hose drip line for all the stuff that we kind of showed y'all yesterday that we worked on planting. Uh, we're gonna start out here in the front yard actually. So we got like our soaker hose equipment here. We're gonna be attaching it to that bib over there and then we're gonna be running it oh, nice through the backyard good. to get to all of our other plants that we have back there. So Shelby has decided to join us today. Decided on the one who said go outside and start the vlog. She totally did. Um, yeah, so last year, if you guys remember, we didn't water these fruit trees regularly at all. And only the fig tree really did anything. 
Well, the cherry what? tree. Oh. Well, the citrus, yes. But it's also dead now. So the pomegranate and the cherry tree didn't do anything. And I think it might be because they didn't have water. So we're going to run this soaker hose from the front, like Madison said, so that we can get to all of our plants outside without it crossing our balcony or our patio, but also so that the fruit trees can get water and have a fighting chance this year at producing something. So, a lot of parts. As I've said multiple times though, I used to do this when I lived in California. This is what I did, so I kind of know how to run this stuff, but it's been a while also. Let's see if I, if I can get it done. Oh, also, Brittany's joining us today. Oh, she's running away. Oh, no! <laughs> it's been rather windy these last few days, so there you go. Madison actually caught our neighbor leaf blowing a bag into the storm drain the other day. Let's get busy. Great. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> We're running this hose from this bed into this bed. Brittany's decided to not drill through the wood. She is drilling through the Should dirt. Should I drill through the wood? Oh no, the dirt's a better idea, but I'm just saying. Y'all know we're just out here trying to get this drip line laid, and all of a sudden, me and Brittany hear a boom, a very, how did it sound, Brittany? <laughs> and we look over, and all I hear is Brittany going, Tippy, no! Tippy, no! And a bird had hit our window while we're right here. That's weird that there was a bird that flew down here while we're right here. And then it was, like, stunned on the ground, and Tippy was going after it. And then it finally was able to, like, get up and fly away a little bit, landed over there, and Tippy was still after it. You should have seen me and Brittany running after Tippy trying to get him. Madison thinks we're being ridiculous, but we saved the bird. I didn't let him outside for this specific reason, but someone because of a bird might hitting the window, which has never ever happened. No, because we're working and we're paying attention to the project. But luckily, he didn't run over a fence. But I just kind of stood here. The let fence is open. <laughs> Brittany, Brittany let Tippy outside. How do you feel about that? I mean, the bird looked fine. Hopefully he he flew is. away and he was okay. How weird that a bird flew through here while we were standing right here. Yeah, is, is his... Because I've had a bird hit my window before and it left an imprint. No. Oh, wait, right there maybe where that feather is. Oh, no! <laughs> right there where the feather is! And so much, like, yelling and commotion, Tippy decided... I, I opened the door and basically he was like, all right, I'm going inside. We got some strawberries that are ripe. I picked the smallest little one. Isn't it adorable? It's red, so it should be good to go. Let's test it out. Ooh, that's pretty good. We did as much as we could, but we ran out of hose, soaker hose and the other dead hose we were using. So now we're just gonna go turn it on and see what happens, but we gotta make a run to go get some more. Well, we need more because we're gonna obviously fill that bed. Brittany also wants me to put like a ring around each tree, which is easy enough. We just need more soaker hose. And something else I forgot. What was the other thing? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, the things to put it down? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So see how it's all very disheveled, not very orderly? It's because I didn't remember to get the little things to stake them down. Sod staples. Brittany all looked right. them up, said they're called sod staples. But Madison's going to turn it on. We're going to see how it goes. Oh, there it goes. Oh, see the soaking? That looks like a hot summer's day. Let's go. Well, it takes a second. Soaking through here. Soaking. Still soaking. Still soaking. What do you mean you don't see any? It's going to take a while to get over there, I guess. But it's definitely going through here. Kind of... Oh, that's not the soaker hose. That's why. Uh-oh. What happened? It hasn't made it all the way through here yet, I guess. Can you see the water? Focus. There we go. I don't see it. He hasn't made it over there yet. <laughs> Pretty staring at one piece of the hose. Not all the way yet. We'll get there, I think. What we currently got going on is our drip line. It's dripping pretty well in this bed. And then it's dripping well, like, along the wall here and from the spigot. But when we get to this end over here where it's all muddy, 
one, it's been leaking, as you can see. And then two, it's not getting to this other bed. So I think we may have to split the system in two just because it looks like maybe there's not enough pressure or there's a blockage somewhere, but we've been troubleshooting trying to figure out what we're gonna do for next steps. Shelby's gonna give everything a good watering. We got some things accomplished in the garden, not as much as we've liked because again, we talked about how the soaker hose situation kind of didn't work out 100% like we wanted to. We did get the tomatoes in the ground, which is a thumbs up. And now we're gonna go get some food. So I kind of made a oopie and apparently you can't, We the plan was to go get the food and then go to. I just want you guys to keep in mind what happened last time Madison planned what we were gonna eat. <laughs> oh, what the hell? This happens way too often when Madison is in charge of planning. The same thing just happened. Basically we got there and they were like, yeah, it's gonna be an hour wait time. So we ended up coming to this park that was kind of close. It's called Tom Slick Park. And it's pretty beautiful out here. It's a really nice weekend. So kids are like over there bouncing. Oh, you should get the B-roll of this because they just look like ants. <laughs> but yeah, so we're out here just walking around kind of checking it out until our food is ready in another hour. So just making the most of a nice day. Okay, this is it. See some algae from eutrophication. There's supposed to be a bigger body of water though. Yeah. That's what we're going to? Yes. I got a bug in my mouth. Get me out of this country, <laughs> bumpkin. It's Woods' death. The fuck is that? Oh. Yeah. Don't cut the corners. It's already fucked up. Okay. You gonna add to it? Our climate's already fucked up. We just say fuck it. Whoa. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Looks like we can get a better viewpoint over there. How come there's no swimming? Strong currents from where? Should we keep going? Which way? You said this way. This was a very happy accident. Honestly, this park is really cool. Again, Tom Slick Park in San Antonio. We were walking and we were like, hmm, they got like a dog park, basketball area or whatever. And then we kept walking. We found this nice little pond. It's super cool. So now we're just kind of walking around it. You can see people like walking around and there are like little trails where people come down and look at it. But noted for the future that this is a pretty cool little spot, but we got to go get our grub on because the food should be ready any minute. Look at that bird, he's like. <laughs> That is what he's doing. Pretty good. Mm, yeah. He drying his wings off. I'm doing my part. Desertifying. We they could have just came right here on the concrete. We just watched Kiss the Ground last night, Madison. The disappointment. Easy solution this time. Just walk a little bit further. Was it worth it? Yes. Shame. After a whopping hour and a half, we finally got Fat Rabbit. And it's pretty good, honestly. I got the Korean mac and cheese and ate half of it in the car on the way home. Very tasty. Shelby got a sampler uh, situation going on. You know we gotta try everything. Okay, so what you working with? Crunchwrap Supreme. Here. Pizza, Pizza Crunchwrap, seems random, but it's damn good. I only took one bite so far. Okay. This is the spicy garlic parmesan, which I just have one and it's really good and spicy. Ooh, let's see that. Oh, very nice. And mac and cheese. Cool. And then what do we got over here? So I got the just red hot chicken nugget thingies, buffalo wings, that's what they are, with macaroni and cheese. And then the parmesan garlic truffle fries, I think. Very nice. So what are we thinking? Everything good? Well, mm -hmm. they may have to wait for so long. We're damn hungry. So <laughs> it's good for me. I am. 
I think they use coconut milk in the um, mac and cheese. Yeah, so look at a little bit of a sweet aftertaste. Because I can I can sniff out anything I don't like, aka coconut. <laughs> it's in here. But the buffalo sauce kind of balances it out. Very nice. We're going to dig into this food here, but we will catch you all next Saturday. So until next time, catch you later, Maddle